It is a strange fate that we should suffer so much fear and doubt over such a small thing. Such a little thing. And with that Boromir quote, I want to talk about what gear do we actually need for landscape photography. I've been taking photos for more than a decade now, and I live and breathe landscape photography. That also means I've got a lot of experience with what kind of gear and gadgets that are necessary for you to take good landscape photos. So that's what this video is all about, the gear you actually need as a landscape photographer. And for this video to last more than 30 seconds, I want to divide it into four categories. The necessary gear, the good to have gear, the nice to have gear, and the completely unnecessary to have gear. So first and foremost, we obviously need a camera and we don't really need anything more than a camera that can shoot in manual mode. So you can have control over your settings and it also needs to shoot raw even though that's even on the edge of <laughs> nice to have. But shooting raw is really good because generally when we do landscape photography, we also want to edit our landscape photos. We don't want to just go out and shoot JPEG photos. And that is it. That is really it. That is all you need to take good landscape photos. Obviously, you will also need an SD card to save your photos on your camera. But yeah, manual and shooting raw, that's all you need with a camera. So let's move into the nice to have category. And here we're moving up into <laughs> bigger cameras. Obviously, there are so many different cameras on the market. You need to figure out what is necessary for you to go out and take good landscape photos. By now, whether you have the Sony a7R5, as I've already made a video about, the Nikon Z7 Mark II, or the Canon R5, nobody can see the difference. Like, trust me, nobody can see the difference. Maybe some camera engineers at the different camera brands can see the difference, but the raw files are raw files. The difference is from the individual photographer to the individual photographer, how their editing style is. That's the difference. Obviously, there's a few different practical things you need to take into consideration when it comes to these cameras. Some of them are better at weather resistance. Some of them do have a larger and broader lens selection. Some of them are more practical to use in the field, dependent on their individual small gimmicks like this flippy floppy screen from the A7R. Five. And speaking of editing and raw files, be sure to enroll in my big Photoshop for Landscape Photographers post-processing course if you want to learn how I edit my photos. The course is designed so it's easy for beginners to get started and even advanced editors ought to be able to learn something from it. Whether you use Lightroom or Camera Raw or maybe even other raw softwares, you should be able to benefit from what I teach in this class and put it onto your own raw converter and then continue into Photoshop with it. There is a link with a coupon code down in the description of the video if you want to save a little bit of money. Now, if you have a small camera like the Sony RX100 Mark 7 and it covers a focal range equal to 24 to 200 millimeter, you obviously do not need other lenses. This camera is in and of itself really Good. However, if you have something like the Sony a7R5, then it's of course really good to have a decent lens selection. So what is a decent lens selection? Well, wide angle zoom, standard zoom and a telephoto zoom. These days, especially if you have either a Sony or a Nikon, you can exchange these two to a super zoom. If you're using Sony, you can use the Tamron 28 to 200 millimeter. Obviously, if you get a small lens like this, you do sacrifice a little bit on image quality from these two lenses put together. But I would personally say that for the most part, it's a sacrifice that most people will not notice anyway. Now, if you aim to do nighttime photography, it is definitely nice to have a good fast prime lens. This is the 20 millimeter f1.8 from Sony. Works fantastic for Sony cameras. 
And in that regard, it is obviously also beneficial to have a full frame camera because bigger sensor, more light, easier to handle the night sky. Now, speaking of nighttime landscape photography, you will definitely need a tripod because you're going to make long exposures. So a tripod is a necessity. However, for daylight landscape photography, a tripod is not really a necessity, especially not anymore with all the good image stabilization that are either built into the cameras or are in the lenses. It is still good if you're shooting like after sunset, before sunrise, where a longer shutter speed is necessary, especially if you're closing down your aperture to something like f8 to f11 or even f16. There are also always a good debate about what kind of tripod you will need. Personally, I am fine in 95% of my photography with a small tripod like the Benro Travel Angel. If I need something a little bit larger, I have the Benro Rhino. It's a little bit taller. And if I need something even bigger, I have the Benro Mark III. What I found over the years when choosing a tripod you need to consider your own height. So if you're a tall person, it is not always beneficial to walk around with a small tripod. However, for the photography in and of itself, you don't need those big bulky tripods. Smaller tripods, carbon fiber, decent build quality can do. Okay, so another thing that is good to have, not necessary to have, but good to have is a camera backpack. You need to take all sorts of different things into consideration. Obviously, walking around with a camera backpack, you're showing and telling the environment that you are a photographer and you have something valuable in here. So if you are in places like San Francisco, maybe you should be a little bit more careful walking around with something like this. And you should probably have something that does not show that you have a lot of value in your backpack. This here is the Shimoda Action X. I use that a lot when I'm out hiking. It has this extra pouch here on top where I can put a lot of like stuff into. So I have a pretty good backpack here. And that is basically what there is to say about getting camera backpacks in this video. There is also an argument for talking about filters in the good to have category. This here, is a pouch with a lot of different ND filters and polarizing filters. They're good to have if you want to manipulate your shutter speed and you want to make long exposures. They are not necessary to have to do landscape photography, but they're good to have if you're aiming for a specific style of landscape photography. So another thing that is really good to have is a proper toolkit, which simply just helps you to tighten screws untighten screws and so forth. I would definitely put this one here in the good to have category. Not necessary to have, but good to have. And of course, first aid kit, good to have. If you're out and about, have a first aid kit in your camera backpack or your backpack. It's not that it's going to save your life, but first aid is always good. And if you get caught outside, make sure to have some kind of light Phone lights are not always good. Get a head torch, just have it in your backpack. Make sure that it is always charged so you can find your way back home if you get caught out in darkness. So let's move into the nice to have category. Down here on the bottom, you can see I have a little base plate. And if I bring in my camera backpack, you can see here, I have this capture clip from Peak Design. That is a very nice to have little thing because when I'm out and about, I can simply just attach my camera to this clip and then the camera is tightened onto the backpack and I can't really get it off. I just need to release it and there we go. The Peak Design capture clip, very nice to have. So another very nice thing to have is an L bracket. So you simply just attach the L bracket to the bottom of your camera and it comes with a few different benefits. Firstly, it's very easy to just use if your L bracket is Arca Swiss compatible, simply just take off the L bracket from the horizontal orientation and then put it into the vertical orientation. 
On top of that, you don't need to move your ball head around. So putting the ball head down on the side and the camera start to do like this, it's much easier to just keep it in the same position. So an L bracket is not necessary to have. I would even put it in the good to have category, but it is definitely in the nice to have category. Should we put it in the good to have category? Probably. There is actually now an alternative to the L brackets on the market, which is this little funny thing. I will maybe make a video about it in the future because honestly I haven't tested it out properly yet. But you also attach that to the bottom of your camera and now you don't even have to take the camera off the tripod or the ball head to change the orientation of the camera. It should work great, but um, let's see how it works in the future. And a few mentions on lenses. Obviously, 100 to 400 millimeter is nice to have as a landscape photographer. Most people can probably do with a 70 to 200 millimeter. The 100 to 400s have a tendency to be more expensive. Another nice to have is that you get a proper lens color third to your telephoto lens. This helps on stabilizing the lens, especially when you extend it, but also because the lens is obviously rather big. So instead of the camera starts to tipping over, you put the center of gravity underneath the lens. Well, the center of gravity of your entire camera setup will be on your tripod. You get what I mean. Nice to have is also proper lens cloths. Yes, you can get cheap cloths down at the gas station, some nano wiping cloths or whatever work great. You can even use your t-shirt. However, nice to have are some decent quality lens cloths. These ones here, as far as I remember, they are called magic cloths. They are amazing. Look them up. Remote. Also very nice to have. Yes, you can use two second timer in your camera to take the photo. You can use a wire trigger, a remote. This one here for Sony, super expensive, but well, it works. Nice to have. And of course, if you want to learn about composition landscape photography, which is definitely a necessity if you want to take good landscape photos, be sure to get my two eBooks on exactly that topic. They are easy to read with minimal text and loads of examples so I get to the point fast. There are links to both ebooks down in the description of the video. Now a few things that are completely unnecessary to have that I even don't have are such a thing like graduated neutral density filters because for the most part I simply just bracket my photos. They are super expensive and completely it's, they're just messy to work around with and they are annoying. I don't really know about any photography competition that requires you to take single frame photos anymore. In that case, you can argue there's justification for having a graduated neutral density filter. But do, do, do you go for those competitions? Personally, I don't. So no, they are faff. I don't like them. I don't own them. Now since I started the video with proclaiming that you actually don't need more than a small camera like this, obviously it means that it is completely unnecessary to buy big medium format cameras. Yes, the image quality is amazing. Yes, if you need a medium format camera for the job you need to do, then you know who you are. But the vast majority of photographers, I would say 99.9% .9 of landscape photographers don't need a medium format camera. Some would argue it should be in the nice to have category, but even then I would say no, because you have to hike with it. It is big, it is heavy, it's annoying, it's slow to work with. Personally, I would say medium format cameras unnecessary. What you haven't seen on this table either are camera straps. I'm divided on that one because on the one hand, completely unnecessary because I never use them. But there is an argument for using them if you just go for a walk with your camera. But it is usually not those times where you actually go out and take the best photos. But at the very least, then you have the camera with you. So it's probably fluctuating between the nice to have and the unnecessary to have. Let me hear down in the comments, camera straps. How do you find them? <laughs> They're just super annoying. Definitely always take your camera strap off your camera unless you need to have something 
to hold on to or, or something like that. The, the wind takes them and it shakes the camera and it's just in the way. So is there any camera gear that I forgot to mention in either of the categories? Necessary to have, good to have, nice to have, unnecessary to have. Let me know down in the comments, help each other out. I'm sure you guys have other experiences than I do. I just were kind of provoked to make this video because I was just in the Faroe Islands and my guest who was there with me, he had medium format camera gear with him. We went up to the top of mountain once and he was like convinced, okay, maybe, maybe a medium format camera was a little bit too large to hug around with in the mountains. I hope you benefited from this video. If not, well, then read the comments and see if you can benefit from those instead. <laughs> Check out the links down in the description of the video for my ebooks and my Photoshop course. If you want to learn even more, see you next time.